Bouquet is a very lovely and popular effect and I will show you today different techniques throughout the video on how to create this in Affinity Photo. It's very nice and easy, so let's get started. The first thing, of course, we want to do is to have a nice photo that we can start with. And as you can see, there's no bouquet in the picture yet. I will delete the other layers so we are not getting confused with them. And of course, the easiest way to do this is to just go to File, Place, and then select one of the bouquet textures or pictures that you've downloaded from the internet. But don't just leave the video yet because there's a lot more to do and a lot more to learn on how to perfect this. So with this texture selected, set the blend mode to screen and you can see it works, but the background is blown out, so not ideal. What we need to do is to click here on blend ranges with the texture selected, texture layer selected, to get this window. And now we use the source layer ranges and reduce the left side where the dark colors are. Pull this down to the bottom and you can see it reduces the influence of the lighter colors on the background. I will also reduce it here a little bit so it's getting not as intense and just the light parts are left over that we can use. And it's pretty nice. And the cool thing is, of course, we can move the texture around where we want to have it. So we want to use something where we create a nice effect around the face of our model. So we will use one layer up here, duplicate it, and then use a second layer down here. And as you can already see, we have to look out for errors in the picture um, like this. We have white lines here or glowy lines here. That is not good. We have a half bouquet here and another one here. We have to reduce that. So let's fix this. So I will rasterize them. Right click, click on rasterize for both layers. Rasterize the other one too. There we go. And now we will just use our eraser tool over here, set the hardness to zero, set it to a, to a fitting size that you can work with, and then we will we'll just erase the parts that we don't want to have in our picture. Select the other layer. There we go. And also maybe make it a bit bigger over here to reduce these lines in the background. Very nice. There we go. So this is soft blended with the background from the edges. We have one here. I'm not going to erase this because this is blending with the other circles. So what I'm going to do instead is I will go here and take our um, clone brush and we'll just copy this part up here. Uh, the opacity is reduced to 25%. Let's see. Okay, this is good. Do this multiple times so we are getting something that is in the range of what we want to achieve with that maybe down here too so we blend it nicely with the other circle that we had before did it a bit too much right let's go back some steps there we go okay that's nice so now we have a full bouquet circle and as you can see right now, the bouquet is not blending completely natural with the background. We can improve on that. We can do that a bit better. What we want to do for that is click um, on the upper layer and create a new pixel layer on top of each or all of the other layers. We will go down here to our rectangle tool. Let's reset this so not we get not confused. And with the rectangle tool, just Click and drag a rectangle over all of the picture. Then we will set our um, rectangle layer to zero. By the way, we didn't have to create a pixel layer. That was wrong because the rectangle is creating its own layer. I will delete that. Okay. With the rectangle layer selected and opacity at zero, we will go up here where it says fill and click on gradient. And there's two circles here for our blending colors. So let's start with the right one. Click on the circle, click on the color, then click on the color picker and select a nice dark color in this case for the right part. Click again on the color picker so it's activating the color. Now we click on the left circle, click on the color, click on the, co uh, the color picker and drag it over here 
to select another picture, I will select a dark orange this time. Again, click here on the color picker to activate the color. And now we have this nice gradient. We can set the opacity back to 100%. You can see the gradient is going over all of the picture. And all we need to do now is select a blend mode that fits our purpose. So there's a lot of choices, of course. You can go with light and color, has a, uh, sorry, uh, you can go with screen that has a very nice and blown out effect. You can go with overlay. It's a crushed and intense effect, but a bit uh, too intense maybe. So I will go with soft light, which gives us a nice and soft effect. And as you can see, it gives us a deeper and more, um, how can I say, a live picture. So our bouquet fits better with the background. One more thing you can do is to go over with the with the rectangle layer selected, go over here to gradient tool, click on it, and it will give you this nice line here in the middle. And this will enable you to set how the gradient plays out. So how, how strong is it fading from left to right, but also where is the right uh, side ending and where is the left side starting? As you can see, if I push this over, there's more orange coming into it. And of course, you can pull it to every angle. So we can even make it a diagonally gradient from the lower part to the upper part. So there's a lot of possibilities here to play around. And this is basically the first technique. The second one that I'm going to show you is really cool because we are going to create a gradient. Uh, no, no, sorry. I'm a bouquet brush and that is pretty easy. Let's hide the other layers. I will keep the rectangle gradient over the picture because this will give us an advantage and I will create a new edit pixel layer below our gradient layer. Now we are going over to our brush tool, paint brush tool, and you want to click up here on more. I have to reset this because I already created the brush. Let's reset this because we want to go from zero. Okay, there we go. Now it's just a round brush. Okay, click here on more and as you can see, it's just a line. So this is not ideal for us. Uh, what we want to have is something that looks like a bouquet. So click on dynamics. And now we can set a lot of variables. So we will introduce a size chitter and we will introduce a flow chitter and we will introduce some scattering on the X axis, some scattering on the epsilon axis. And you can see now it's spreading out. I will make it bigger. There you can see this gives us much more of the effect that we want to see in our picture. Let's go. This is a bit maybe too big. This is nice. Okay. So you can also set the hardness chitter a little bit, not too much. Maybe like this shape chitter. We don't need rotation. We don't need because it's round. So um, we can't work with that. Okay. And with this set, we can already paint something bouquet like, but there's a lot more to do yet. So as you can see, it's a good start, but we need to do more. Let's go control A. So we select everything and just delete it. And the next thing we need to do is, okay, it's already set to blend. So um, uh, the blend mode set it to screen. So this is important. And the next thing we need to do is also set, of course, the blend mode of the layer to screen. So this is the blend mode of the layer. This is the blend mode of the brush. So now if we paint, we have this and if we paint again, it's giving us these blown out um, overlaps of the circle. So that is pretty nice for us uh, to have. Let's delete that again. I need to go back to our settings. Let's set the size chitter to um, stronger. Accumulation chitter we can also do. This is the transparency of our um, brush. There we go. Let's try this again. So it's a bit of trial and error, but it doesn't matter. There we go. This already looks kind of good. And the next thing you want to do while looking at this is click on your layer and click on effects. One thing we want to do is activate Gaussian blur and set it a little bit to a way where we think, okay, this is what we want to have. So this looks kind of nice. 
The other thing we want to do is go to inner glow, activate that, set it maybe in this case to a dark red. And to have more option, you can click on this little wheel down here for layer effects. It will open the window and there it gives us also a blend mode and a little bit more settings. So this is very nice. Um, make it more intense, make the radius higher. The opacity can stay like this. And let's see with different colors. As you can see now, it gives us the ability to have different colors in our bouquet. So they are not all the same color. And that's pretty important because it makes it more alive. We can reduce the opacity a bit. Let's see with the radius if it's higher. Smaller radius. Maybe let's leave it like that. Intensity, let's see. Also leave it like this probably. I will set it back to red because I think this works pretty good with what we already have as a color. Of course, you can also play around with the blend modes, but um, screen works pretty good in this case. What is with multiply? No, multiply is much too intense. Color burn, much too intense. This is not good. What's with soft light? Soft light is also nice. Or overlay, overlay is also pretty nice. So we can use this. Let's leave it at that. Uh, it's a lot about experimenting, of course. Okay, let's delete this again and make the brush a little bit smaller. No, this is this is way too small. There we go, 100, uh, maybe a bit bigger. No, this is too big. Like this. Brush it in here a little bit and a little bit more. No, the last one was a bit too much into the face. Uh, I will reset or oh, let's do one up here. I will zoom out a little bit so I have more space to work with. Let's get back the brush. Whoop, up here. And then we will take some smaller ones. Brush them in here a little bit, maybe. Wait. Let's set the dynamics and um, reduce the flow. Where's the, there's the spacing. Let's make the spacing a lot bigger for the smaller ones. And also the size chitter. So it's really good that we have these options to do that. Let's move this to the maximum. Okay. And as you can see, we can really create our bouquet where we feel we want to have it. There we go. You can, of course, go to your layer and reduce the opacity if you want to have more or less of this effect in your picture. But this is basically how you create a bouquet brush that looks pretty nice. And it does, of course, not look 100% real, but it gives you more opportunity to play with it. And it's more of like a fantasy effect, a nice effect. So let's compare this uh, with what we have before. So as you can see, it's a little of, there's a bit of texture and other things going on inside of the light. So it does look different, but this effect is pretty nice also. You can see it has its own value and it has this bouquet look, but in a more graphical um, designed and hand painted way. So these are two different ways to create it. And you can of course mix both together. So uh, let's hide this one. Display this one in here. Let's see if we get something nice. If we just paint in some smaller ones down here. Let's see. Uh, set this to screen. Reduce the opacity. Set the effect of the layer to Gaussian blur a little bit. And as you can see, they mix pretty well. So. It's a nice way to bring some extra life to your picture, to your layers, if you want to, or just use them on your own, on their own. So that's very nice. And this is the tutorial for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to support me, by the way, you can do so on Patreon. I have a page where I post all my tutorials. And of course, you get my original layered files with it. In this case, I will also export the brushes 
And the support at the moment is just $1 because it's an early supporter program. So if you want a choice, uh, join me, do so, support me. And thank you very much. See you in the next video. Bye.